Today, basically, what we're going to do is Fran is two weeks out from his first show, which is the Miami Pro. Um, what we've done in, over the last week is a bit of mock work for him to be peaked, as to say. Um, so we will talk about that a little bit later on, but we're going to bring you to a push session first, show you how he's looking, and then give you a bit more detail on what we actually did to achieve that look. And now it works, okay? Yeah. So we don't want the arms back here. Up, up. up. Oh, medial delt, yeah? Yeah. This one's not even one set in, you can already see the detail. Ah? Uh -huh. You can already see the detail. Right, just remember, open out. Open out, yeah. Open out, yeah. Basically, the reason why we use the cuffs here, um, cuffs are great for removing joints from a movement, so there's less joint pressure. So you can see here, this is attached to the wrist, so we're removing the wrist from this actual movement, but also the line of force is then closer to the actual muscle we're trying to work, so it's actually closer to the shoulder muscle. Rather than using a D handle, it's a little bit further away. Connection is also way better. Keep that joyful. Keep it smooth. Nice. One more. Let's go. Big try, big try, big try, big try. <sighs> right. Awesome right, so that is delts pretty much warmed up. Um, now, after I usually perform movements similar to that, just again to get blood flow in, um, warm up the, the, the muscle, put some blood flow around the, the joints. Then we go on to a heavier taxing move. We're going to do a high incline Smith press here. Um, that's kind of our main driver for this, this session. Make sure your scapula is pinched, yeah? Chest is up. Launch out, yeah? Just a warm set, not too much fatigue here. Just getting a feel for that moving basically. Good stuff. Whipping out all the bells and whistles. So this setup here is a reverse banded setup um, using a daisy chain clip and a band force. Basically the purpose of it is just to improve the profile of the movement. So it takes some pressure off us where we're at our most vulnerable or our weakest in the lengthened range. And then as we drive up, the, we start to lift more of the true weight. Um, so we have more weight or tension on the muscle when we want it, when the muscle is kind of shortening. Um, just creates a much better or much smoother movement. Um, we don't want too much resistance on the band. We kind of only want to kick it in at the bottom end of the rep. So you will see that as we perform it. So fight that, yeah. So basically, we're for Fran at the moment. We are on. Hold on a second. Um, we're on baseline volume. So we don't. When food is quite low, it fatigue can accumulate. Um, so we're, we're monitoring. We've been monitoring his uh, recovery capabilities for the last while. Baseline volume seems to be enough volume for him that he can recover, can recover from, and still perform at his best. So basically, top set, back off set, mate. Uh, rep range for you are five to eight, eight to twelve. And it has pretty much remained the same for the whole prep. Um, there hasn't been need to change anything. No. 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 Yeah, that's spot. Yeah. Hollywood. One more. No. Straight. 
Straight, straight. Ooh. Also, just on that Smith machine, that's a heavy Smith machine. <laughs> that's a heavy Smith yeah. machine. I think the bar is 20 kg, but it's just kind of in that fixed position. Let's go. Bit smoother this time, yeah? Nice, mate. Let's go, let's go. Yep. Smooth, drive, drive. Oh, drive. One more. Big drive, big drive, big drive. Oh. Keep it smooth. <laughs> that prep strength fit. So the goal for prep is like you will progress for for a bit. Yeah. Then it's just maintaining that strength because when fuel gets that low, as I said, recovery capabilities aren't the best. It's just a matter of holding on to that strength and that's what's gonna hold on to that tissue. Train intensity and maintaining those numbers. Main movements were kind of delts on me and I'm Fran are quite delt dominant, so as you, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> um, we don't need as much volume. When you're trying to, like bodybuilding in general, it's all about symmetry. So when you've got an overpower on body part, it doesn't need as much volume because it doesn't need this basically to grow as much. Um, my chest is a weaker point. So likewise for him, um, we'll tailor volume towards that body part more so or whatever it can recover from. Um, but yeah, that's mine and his dad's pretty much toast. Okay, so Basically, this is a cuff costal pec fly. So we're trying to drive down for the costal uh, pec fibers. Um, bench is at 90 degrees. We have a pad here just for stability. This floor is a little bit slippy, so it drive, we can drive something against. Um, pe uh, cuffs are in and around at the elbow joint. Again, relieving some of that joint pressure, but it also brings the point of tension closer to the, the muscle we're trying to work, so we can actually shorten the pec and get a better connection with the pec too. So driving in the costal fibers, yes, yeah, so we're driving downwards and that's why they're up higher. Down. Remember boys have been to peg. Good. Better. Nice. Your range move there. Perfect. Yes. Drive. So key part about this movement is driving that bicep into the back, trying to fully shorten the back as much as you can. Cuffs close enough to the elbow joint, as close as you can get them to. Nice. Just blood flow, not looking for failure here. So far, flying movements are, sometimes like the delts, we might do a higher top set rather than like the five to eight, like an eight to 12. Just for shortening, it's, it's better. The flying movement is going to be way better for shortening the pec than say a pressing movement. Um, also, you're not going to be as strong in a flying movement as you would be in a, in a pressing movement. Beautiful. Good. One, big drive, biceps in, nice. Nice. Nice and warm now, bud, yeah? Huh? Nice and warm now. <laughs> Plenty of blood in the pecs now, so. For the one, press the movement for pecs with you, incline dumbbells. And then we'll move on to some accessory work for arms. We're pretty much warm now after the, the pec fly, so uh, we'll do two warm up sets and two walking sets. We're pretty much warm already from doing like the, the fly work, so you don't need to put too much fatigue on, especially like that's close enough to my top set. So just a feel for a heavier weight, three or four reps. 
put it back. There's no need to put any more fatigue on it. Just preparing yourself for that top heavy set. Usually on like a push, like this is our delt dominant push session. So more delt focus. So that's why we emphasized pushing delts first. Chest will come in second on our, on our pec dominant session. We probably prioritize like pec movements first. So we're pretty much fatigued at this stage. So not as strong. Might take a, a rep off you up just to get out of that hole. Feel that, mate. Ugh. That's the. Yeah. I'm with you now. Big joy, big joy, big joy. One more, one more. That was smelled. Now joy. One more. And again, and again. Watch that. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back off set usually about 20% of your top set. So 50s was the top set there, 42.5, so. Yeah, I've got it. Fatigue, but it's good though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah, trying to failure, like you can't really judge progressions as well if you're not trying to failure, kind of like reps and reserves is good for and serves the purpose, but when you're trying to progress and you're logging your lifts, more linear way to approach is trying to failure, just trying to be better that session by at least one rep if we can. Not gonna happen every session, but take it when it comes. Let's go. Boy. Yes. Nice. Pinch those shoulder blades back a little bit more, pinch them back, yeah. So you want the length and range here, so we want, try to keep the elbow in position, just dragging, using it as a hinge. Absolutely, yeah. intensity like you don't need as much volume when you're we're trying to failure and when you're accurate with it too those high volume days like a lot of it people who come in and do say four sets 12 to 15 whatever it may be a lot of it is just shit volume you're not actually stimulating the muscle to it to what it should be stimulated to and you're not providing enough stimulus to grow whereas two sets to absolute failure you're gonna grow plenty of times i've done one work and sat on a leg press and been absolutely goosed and done you can't do any more volume you're still growing yeah. you know so like why do more when you don't actually need to grow yeah. you don't need more to actually grow okay so triceps we have two extra long ropes here today they don't actually need to be this long but we just use usually two ropes if there's no normal standard rope 
standing there, especially for like a wider person, very internally rotated. Your line of drive is, is already hunched over. So the two ropes open up that drive. You can pinch your scapula better and the range of movement is much better, more natural for the wider person. They don't need to be this long though. It's a bit over um, overkill. This is more of a push dominant so triceps we push and um, usually start off with a movement that we can shorten the tricep a lot more like a push down like so now we'll go on to the length and range would be like an, an overhead tricep extension or an overhead rope extension in this instance i'd normally be perform this like seated a bit more stability but just for convenience today we'll do a standing As you can see, we kind of tagged on arms there at the end, uh, mostly tricep focus, but our logging, bo logging body parts are chest, arms as well, so a bit more volume in arms isn't needed. So we'll um, go up and have a look at you. Bit of posing, have a look at how this peak basically went. As you can see, it's quite, quite dry, quite full, but we won't be able to see until we take it all off. To be honest, we're, we're, we're pretty much shredded like, but you do look a little watery. You do look a little watery compared to the comparison that I had. So, but we haven't done any kind of, we haven't done anything water manipulation or anything yeah. like that. So basically for the mock week that we did, we did two days fat loading um, and then a two day carb load. The purpose of the fat load is to bring in triglycerides into the cell, um, but also improve insulin sensitivity for a heavier carb load. Then carb load was to fill up glycogen storage in the muscle. Uh, we didn't manipulate any water or any sodium just because of how far we are out. It is just only kind of data that we're collecting. But as we can see, like he does look a lot fuller, but he is quite watery. So I don't think we overdid it in the carbs. His carbs are only about 400 grams, but I do think some water manipulation could help. We didn't use any kind of expel or, or natural diuretics or anything like that. And water intake was around six liters. Yeah. So we could, we have a bit of room for, for improvement there, but turn around to the back. Pretty much shredded. Striations in the back. But we do have a little bit of water. Chest up, arch up, so chest up, yeah, yeah. Bring the hamstrings in if you can. Yes, that's what we want there. Very good, man. Very good, now relax. Good, good. So with the likes of like peak work, the key is just to be ready. Like we can afford to mess around here with a bit of kind of carb load and fat load, whatever you want to call it. But the key principle here is be ready early. It just saves the stress, it saves the hassle. There's not much that can go wrong. Like as you can see, he's a bit watery there, but if he steps on stage like that, he's still looking very, very good. Um, so if you're still fat, like if there's still body fat present, there's not any magic peak week that's gonna work. You're, you're still gonna showcase that on stage. So there's no need for any water manipulation, sodium, carbs, whatever it may be. If you're fat, you're fat, it's simple as. Um, be ready and that removes all the stress possible. So a bit of information, a bit of that collected here. We know exactly what we could do to improve that. Um, I think so anyway, but I'm pretty happy with the look that we have here. So let's just run, a, run through a few poses then, yeah? So let's run through your quarter turns. So come out, so front relax then. Nice. Nice, John, I've got a few in the mirror here. Good. 
squash run to the right. Go ahead, exhale. See this here. Exhale. Slow out and punch slightly forward towards the neck. Right towards the neck. Yes. Good. Squash run to the right. Bring those hamstrings in. Yes. Chest up. Slightly rotate a little bit more and bring more chest in. Yeah. So that's a nice pose for you. And quarter turn to the right. Good. See that standing leg? Try bring in some separation. Yes, that's what you want there. So don't put all the way. Make sure kind of every detail. You can showcase as much detail as possible. It all matters. Perfect. Frontal bicep. Most muscular, you're not really going to showcase that on stage, on the fitness model stage. Yeah. So if you wanted to showcase most muscular, I'd probably make it a little bit more frilly. Yeah. So maybe hands in the hip. Yes, hands in the hip, something like that. And exhale, good. And add some toys. There's the money shuffle. Classic pose, arm one overhead. Remember that other standing leg, bring as much detail as in as you can. That's the one. Super. Super. Yeah. Very happy. Very happy. I think that like, even that, as I said, like if you showcase that on stage, like, that's still a very, very strong physique in terms of internal balance. Like with fitness modeling, like it's not just about, it's not body, like exactly like bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, you're just judged on, on your physique and that's pretty much it. Muscle mass, symmetry, all that. Fitness model is a little bit different. Um, stage presence is huge. Marketability is another one. So the actual overall image, then it comes down to condition and obviously overall symmetry as well. Fitness model isn't a huge category, so you don't need to be massive. It's more so the finer details. So this basically, that, that's fitness model at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, mate. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. So, um, do you want to try your kit on? <laughs> Do you want to try your <laughs> kit on and, and let Frank kind of explain how, how he's feeling, basically, this, this far out from the show? So we're two weeks out now from the Mammy Pro. Um, excitement is starting to kick in now. Like, uh, all the hard work is done. Just kind of doing the last few uh, finishing touches with Josh, like the fat load, the carb load. Um, I'm down, down to water for every couple of weeks to do, um, or every couple of days to do posing. So, it's crunch time now and just kind of relieve a bit of stress leading into the show, like, yeah, isn't it? That's pretty much it. Like, as I said, like being ready early, it just takes that much stress off. Like mm -hmm. the whole stress of a prep is, am I actually going to look good on stage? And having that ability to come in early, it just takes all that stress away. I have to say, like, it has been a pretty smooth prep, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. There hasn't been many ups or downs, fingers crossed, so far. I've prepped you before, like, I've been working with Fran, like, we worked together about two years ago. Two years, yeah. So, and obviously we stopped work and then back together. So since then, how much he has came on in terms of what your physique, even business, just mindset, yeah, yeah. everything. It's just heaps. So it just goes to show the values of actually prepping and what structure it can actually put into your life. But even like, what are you starting now like with your own business? So I started my online coaching business. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I started my online coaching business. Um, I kind of went off the back of before I, I went off the back of a photo shoot prep, and it up turned into a contest prep. And uh, mentally, I've just completely changed in the last two years. What I've learned from from the prep alone um, has, has taught me a lot. Like, so I just decided to kind of go for a passion that I had in fitness, and uh, like the motivation and everything is just there. Like, you know, and I feel like if anyone came to me for um, advice or anything, like I could give it from to anything. Like. You know, I have to say, like, the amount that you've come on, just even your character, I mean, like the, the, the confidence, everything, like him launching his own business, the whole lot. I do think the prep has, has something to do with that in yeah. terms of lighting a fire. Big learning curve as well, like, you know. Yeah. It's all about experience in the prep for me, like, you know, you have to kind of 
you can talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk, you know, and I kind of feel like I'm doing that now. I'm putting in that's, the work. That's the line, bud. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> we got a good line there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a wrap. That was a, a decent session, in fairness. Um, we'll probably be touching base again with Fran in, in regards to like a video. Probably, it'll probably be, it'll probably be post-show at this stage. We need to kind of really put the energy into bringing his best for the show. So. Next one will probably be post show, maybe a couple of pounds heavier and a little bit stronger. But um, yeah, stay tuned if you want to see some more. And um, we'd appreciate a like and uh, subscribe.